Okay, good job. Oh, you got it. Oh, you got it. You be in a, you be recorded. You. <laughs> That's why you was laughing. Are you showing that? You gonna be on me? No. Be on the internet. No. <laughs> Just start over. Yeah. I seen that already. I seen. I find myself saying that a lot these days when I see a movie. I find myself saying, I saw that already. Why do we keep adapting the same stories? Now I'm that person who is irritated by seeing the same movies in theaters. You know, sometimes you get a few new ones. It's probably Disney, but that's just me. I don't really watch a lot of movies anymore because a lot of them are just adaptations or remakes or part twos, part threes, part sixteens, you know. <laughs> just the same story over and over again. Not a lot of original stuff, so I don't really watch movies anymore. <laughs> I don't even remember what the last Willy Wonka was. I think it was the one with Johnny Depp. Yeah, the power guy. Oh, I don't care. The Tim Burton one, yeah, that's the one I like. Well, I honestly like both, but the original guy who was like kind of scary and had bipolar disorder. You lose! Good day, sir! Charlie. My boy. You won! I don't know. <laughs> Now they're trying to make a new one and honestly I don't even know if it came out already because I just haven't been keeping up with it because I don't plan on seeing it, sorry. Um, I like the actor who's playing Willy Wonka but it's kind of just like as soon as I saw him I was like they only did they only cast him for his bone structure because he looked similar to Johnny Depp's adaptation of Willy Wonka? Like <laughs> is that Willy Wonka's trope now? Good bone structure? <laughs> Are we in a story writer famine? where no one knows how to write stories anymore, where we only know how to direct things. We only have talented directors, people who know how to control a stage, pick out good actors and tell people what to do, but we don't know how to write anymore to the point where we just keep remaking the same stuff. Or are, we, are people just keep making all these adaptations because it's a cash grab and it's a nostalgic and people like me feed off the nostalgia but if i see it too much i start to get a little frustrated <laughs> you know like i'm not gonna watch that new willy wonka and i'm sorry about that but uh anyway enough rambling why do we keep adapting the same stories nerd nostalgic is gonna answer that question for us now you guys know as i already well maybe you don't know but at the end of every month the last day of every month i want to react to a youtuber from like a channel that i'm fond of the last month was patty mayo this month the last wednesday in september i upload every wednesday so this month is gonna be nostalgic i love analysis channels i'm gonna see what nostalgic has to say about uh adapting stories i'm so glad you could come this is going to be such an exciting day i hope you enjoy it i think you will Really that span generations. We all grow up with them and know them by heart. They're basically ingrained into our cultural consciousness, which raises a question. If we're already so familiar with these stories, why do we keep retelling them in new movies and TV shows? Yeah, the answer is pretty simple. A lot of you have probably typed it out in the comments already. It's money. But in order to make money, people have to actually watch these things. Maybe the real question is, why are we still watching? What kind of a question is that? So if we like the story, man. Before we get into it, be sure to like this video and subscribe to Nerdstalgic for more content just like this. We've all seen the trailer for Wonka, right? No matter how you feel about whatever Timothy Chalamet is doing or the uncanny valley Hugh Grant Oompa Loompa, this movie is undoubtedly going to make a lot of money when it comes out because it's an adaptation of Roald Dahl's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. The beloved 1964 children's book has been brought to the big screen multiple times over yeah. the course of its nearly 60 year existence, and each version has brought something new to the table. Of course, new doesn't always mean good, and it certainly doesn't mean necessary, so yeah. is the case if are enamored with adaptations general. And why do we look back on both of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory's movie adaptations with fondness? At least because Johnny Depp. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all be weak in the knees. Stand up. Welcome to Hey, 
Ranch Mountain. The 1971 film Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory hits on some of the more emotional my favorite Charlie. The movie brings the most heartfelt moments of the book to life and it translates the childlike wonder of the factory to live action in near perfect detail. Gene Wilder's electric and unsettling performance as the titular unsettling indeed. The songs we are all still singing and the endlessly quotable dialogue the strawberries taste like strawberries. The snozberries taste like snozberries. I always wanted to taste those. And yet, there's a dark undercurrent to the making. Blonde hair, blue eyes. Most people tend to ignore. For one thing, Dahl absolutely despised it. Though he is credited as a screenwriter, Dahl lamented the many small changes made to his script. Key moments like the fizzy lifting. I love that scene. Slugworth's ultimate role in the story were changed entirely. He wasn't very fond of the added songs or even the director. Mel Stewart, and he also hated the casting of Gene Wilder, who he saw as pretentious and too American. <laughs> Smell us in five seconds. Impossible, my dear lady. That's absurd. Unthinkable. Why? Because that pipe doesn't go to the marshmallow room, it goes to the fudge room. Obviously, creators being unhappy with adaptations of their work is nothing new. But we also have to take into account the premise on which the movie was made in the first place. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory was produced in part by the Quaker Oats Company, which means that this charming retelling was only put into production in order to sell candy to children. As an audience, we usually want adaptations to make us feel the way the original work did while still getting something new from the experience. A twist in a tradition tale, like a more subdued Wonka or an evil candy spy, might make for a fresh perspective on a story. That's part of what makes adaptations so enticing. But as we know, studios and the companies surrounding them are more interested in making cash. What do they ask for? You want your case of Wonka bars? Miss Curtis, did you hear me? your husband's life or your case of Wonka bars. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory managed to do it all. For that, we can call it a successful adaptation, even if Dahl would disagree. The real box office money wouldn't come until 2005 with the release hey. of the Factory, starring Johnny Depp and directed by Tim Burton. This is hey. admittedly the stranger of the two adaptations, and it's also the more con Everything was great. Wonka in a way only he can. Mr. Wonka, I'm back. like a corpse. Hinged <laughs> energy is by far the most memorable part of the whole movie. Since this is a Tim Burton production, there's a whole subplot about Wonka's daddy issues featuring the way overqualified Christopher Lee. Every single Oompa Loompa is played by Deep Roy, and the nightmarish squirrel scene is rivaled only by the one in the 2013 Broadway musical. Still, most of the effects hold up surprisingly well, with one or two notable exceptions. Much more faithful adaptation than the 1971 film, especially when you take into account the whimsical and sometimes eerie illustrations from the original book. Dahl's wife, Felicity, has even openly stated that her husband would have loved the movie and Depp's portrayal of Wonka. Now, she may be stuck in the chute just below the top. If that's the case, all you have to do is just reach in and pull her out. With this in mind, 2005's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory gives us a very different reason for adaptation. The need for faithful this brings a classic story in its truest possible form to a new audience, one that may not have experienced the story otherwise, and those that have experienced the story get to see it with fresh eyes in a new format. There's something to be said about this method of cataloging and preserving stories, but even the most impeccably detailed adaptation is bound to miss something, just as 1971's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory may have inspired similar feelings to the book for the audience, yet missed the mark when it came to its creator's intent. In each case, viewers can either be excited or infuriated depending on what they're looking for out of their adaptations. Oh, it's obvious am that I the I saw that already. Retelling these stories has just as many backdraws as it does benefits. Other adaptations manage to surpass their source material in quality, while some are so bad they're actually offensive to the property they're adapting. For every incredible return of the king, there is a disappointing golden compass. The worst offenders are the ones that simply don't need to exist. There are countless examples of an original work being adapted flawlessly, which inspires a whole line of poor- I never saw that adaptation. Snow White, A Christmas Carol, Alice in Wonderland, The Three Musketeers, even Winnie the Pooh hasn't escaped this fate. Nobody wins in this situation. So you get nothing! You lose! Good day, sir! Particularly not in-
Calm down. While they're being weighed down by the slush pile of remakes on the desk of every executive in Hollywood. The 1971 and the 2005 Charlie and the Chocolate Factory adaptations meet some of those nebulous demands. Your mileage may vary on which one you prefer, but they both have their merits. 2023's will likely experience a similar fate for a new generation of filmgoers. The upcoming Wonka promises to be a prequel to the story we know all too well. An approach that will no a doubt prequel. attempt to play on our nostalgic heartstrings if writer oh, like Paul King story? has anything to say about it. The man brought us the Paddington movies, after all. And while the trailer's inspiring score, colorful visuals are easy to get swept up in, we're still left wondering whether we actually need this. There are stories Do we? out there that are I kind of want to see it now, though. From any existing IP. They've been waiting in line for their shot while more adaptations get shunted to the front. Why don't we give something new a chance before we commit ourselves to a train bound for repetition? Once again. Please, I would love to see something original. It's also our own fascination. With the familiar, we can't stop the adaptation train, and we, as a collective audience, have already bought our tickets to ride. But maybe we can get off at the next stop when something truly new and creative catches our eye. That's it for today's video. Thanks so much for sticking with it all the way to the end. Okay, uh, wow, that's the end. I forgot that this video is only about like eight minutes. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I see what he means. Like, people want, people like me, you know, are saying, I want to see something new, you know? But then we still, <laughs> you know, what's getting more money and making people more money is the familiar. So we can say all we want is too many adaptations, but we're not buying the new stuff, the original stuff, you know? Not as much anyway, but um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I enjoyed that video. It made me think as nerdstalgic always makes me think. Um, I like channels like that. Definitely gonna try and uh, seek newer things. You know, like this guy saying, at least that's what I got from this. You know, I am buying the familiar. How about I try to search for more original stuff and, and you know, invest my money in that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I love Billy Wonka. I literally forgot it was music in that movie at all. It's crazy. It's been years since I've watched Billy Wonka. But um, yeah, guys, I'm gonna keep this video short because I went over time on my last video. <laughs> freaking uh, Laufey had me freaking uh, watching Hallmark for 18 minutes straight. Um, but yeah, so um, I enjoyed the videos I made this month. A lot of fun editing. Uh, it's a lot of sleepless nights, but it's worth it. Well, just sleepless Tuesday nights, really. Uh, yeah, so love you guys. And also just one more word of advice. For like um, in honor of this video don't be afraid to try new things I know it's easier to go with the familiar which you're comfortable with which you're more you know accustomed to but don't be afraid to try new things you might find that you actually be good at that you know expand your skill set expand your horizons a bit you know don't be afraid to try new things basically <laughs> uh, see you guys next Wednesday love you guys be safe see you in September I mean October God. <laughs>